economics and management. Today, today, business integrator of the University of Latvia, a honor to host a uh, very, very interesting and incredible person, Fadi Bishar. And uh, Fadi is an entrepreneur, he's an investor, he's a mentor with about 20 year experience in uh, starting successful startup companies. And, uh, and today he's going to share his experience about business, what have he, he done. And um, I ask you, everybody, to like take as much experience out of Fadi as you can, because this is unique, unique opportunity. Fadi here is in Latvia only for one day. And uh, like uh, recent companies he has, like the last companies or companies he's uh, currently working on, some of them have, have been so successful that uh, they have been sold to, to Facebook and to GoDaddy. And that's only like in, in, in a few years time or I don't know, yeah, but like recently. So he has very big, big experience. Just take it out from him and take as much as you can uh, from this one hour lecture. And uh, it will be a question and answer uh, style lecture and uh, you just be open to ask questions. Uh, and uh, maybe we will sit here together okay. with, with, uh, with two more people. Yeah. So, so it's more questions from you, the better. Yeah. But funny, maybe you can uh, start with telling about who are you, about yourself, who, what, what have you done, uh, what have you done, and where have you, where have you been uh, working, and. What kind, what kind of companies you have been working okay. with? Uh, are there people, more people coming? Or? Yeah. It looks like. Well, right, come in. <laughs> come in now, or are we going to close the door? <laughs> so, uh, first, uh, I'm, I'm honored and uh, really uh, grateful to be here. Uh, my first time in uh, Latvia and in, uh, Baltics. Uh, my name is Fadi Bishara, so it's correct so far. Um, originally, I was born and raised in Syria, and I uh, went to the United States to study, and uh, I've now lived in, uh, in uh, Silicon Valley more than I have lived in Syria. So, uh, for uh, the past 20 uh, years or so, I've been working with uh, primarily with technology startups and uh, started uh, by uh, help build the teams for these companies and uh, in the last three years I moved to more uh, um, investment and mentorship and uh, work with um, international companies who want to come to Silicon Valley. So uh, I started Blackbox, that's uh, the accelerator that right now we have in Silicon Valley that uh, uh, focuses exclusively on helping startups from outside of US um, get access to resources and knowledge of Silicon Valley. So uh, I'll probably continue talking. Right? Yeah. I just keep talking. No, no, no. no, no. We stop. I was going to say, what is Silicon Valley or something? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe you could like. I could ask myself questions. Yeah. What? Is, no, no. no. <laughs> please tell. What is then uh, Silicon Valley? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know the answer. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Silicon Valley is a region in uh, Northern California, and uh, it's um, um, very close to San Francisco. It's San Francisco and San Jose, and then there's, there's uh, um, maybe about uh, 50 kilometers in between what's now considered a Silicon Valley. It's called Silicon Valley because that's where the silicon, the semiconductor industry started. This is national semiconductor, so the computer industry all started in that region. And uh, more and more companies like uh, you know Intel and uh, Cisco and a lot of the, the companies that make the, um, the infrastructure, the chips and the piping and the plumbing for technology as well as companies like Oracle who make applications for enterprise software and uh, then uh, Google and 
Facebook and Twitter. So uh, Silicon Valley kind of evolved as uh, in the past more than 50, 60 years uh, as the the first place where people come to um, launch businesses, to start companies, and um, create basically drive the entire wave of innovation. So everything in um, in the United States, kind of uh, all the innovative technology starts in Silicon Valley. So California is on always like setting the trends for the evolution of the U.S. and then uh, some of these evolutions get distributed uh, globally. Uh, we have like there like basic opinion that uh, there is much more easy to start successful business in Silicon Valley than uh, maybe here in Latvia or in Europe. Uh, maybe you can comment on that. Is it truly easier or better to start a startup com to start a, a start startup in Silicon Valley than, than here in Europe? Yeah. So in Silicon Valley, there's like a lot of trees on the street, and they all have uh, money. <laughs> so it's very very easy. Uh, no, the, the 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 unique part of Silicon Valley is the fact that there's have been all these innovation and innovative companies that they started in the garage, you know, Hewlett Packard uh, HP company was the first garage company in Silicon Valley. And people start with, with an idea and, and they build a business and they grow into thousands and hundreds of thousands of employees and products and revenues and whatever. And what happens is uh, because of uh, something very unique about uh, the business environment where all the participants in the company as the company is growing are part owners of the company. So they are hired as employees, but they also have uh, what they have some ownership. Small, very, very small amount of ownership in the company. Like one, one millionth of a percent or whatever. But it's still, when a company goes public, uh, trade their shares on the market, uh, on the public market, those shares become very valuable and this amount of equity could become worth a lot of money for a lot of the employees. So this created like a perpetual cycle. So people join companies, the earlier you join, the more uh, ownership that you have. And the reason of this sense of ownership is because you're taking a risk. You're joining a company that doesn't have any customers, doesn't have any product, you're probably not making salary but you're hoping on the future that this company is going to become big and successful and uh, you will raise money and you will make salary. But because you're taking that risk, you own a small percentage of the company. So uh, for example, um, let's say that uh, the, the employees who join Facebook, uh, you know Facebook, right? <laughs> yeah, we have heard about that. I know you guys have uh, a more, uh, more popular social network than yeah, <laughs> Facebook, but uh, or Google for that matters. Yeah, you know, the, they they probably got uh, let's say the employee number twenty in the company. He may join the company and maybe you know she only got small amount of salary, not what what she would get if she works at a big company, but she may have like half a percent or one quarter percent. Facebook value is now about hundred billion dollar so one percent is a hundred million dollars so quarter percent is 25 million dollars so imagine that kind of uh, things and then you know that amount of uh, ownership is goes smaller as later uh, employees join but then when the company becomes successful this person who joined who only makes 25 million dollars look at Mark Zuckerberg and say oh Zuckerberg is worth 20 billion dollars because he has 20 percent of the company I want to go and start my own company mm -hmm. so it happens on a smaller level the person who joined number employee number 200 may also make you know 200,000 instead of 25 million and but this 200,000 allows this uh, this person to uh, to take the risk uh, himself and decide like I'm gonna start my own company now and there's like a cushion or a buffer uh, that allow him to do this. So the, the notion of Silicon Valley is an easy place to start is because the, this, this whole game of, of entrepreneurship and building companies and startups 
have been played a lot, and there, there are many, many people who have to participate in this game to make it successful. You know, Facebook could not be built by Zuckerberg alone, or Google could not be built by uh, Sergey and Larry. You have to, you get, uh, you need the help of a lot of other people. So there's not only the investors, there's the lawyers, the bankers, the real estate people. They all understand how this game works and understand that you may be starting a business right now and you're not a, you're not a big company, but they're willing to help you take the risk. So the lawyers will help you do the, the documents for the business and they don't charge you money until you later. They say you pay us later. So there's many, many contributors. So it makes Silicon Valley an uh, easier place to start because there's what's called this uh, full ecosystem that supports the growth of a company. I, I use that, that, that phrase, you know, it's been, been said like it takes a village to raise, to raise a child. And I believe it, it's the same. It takes a village to raise a you know a successful company. So it takes a lot of a lot of efforts at a different level of participation from uh, many different stakeholders. Okay, uh, I'll ask like last question of myself at the moment. Afterwards, you you can uh, ask your question. Uh, you start Black Box, uh, which is accelerator, and uh, in the start you can tell what is accelerator. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, afterwards you started the black box with the mission to take uh, to take like very very like talented entrepreneurs from around the world mm -hmm. to Silicon Valley. Well, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you, so, so this, that is one of the way how you can get to Silicon Valley and start a business there. Maybe you can tell about this. Uh, why did you choose this mission? And uh, how the process is uh, is happening? How it, how it's how it's done? Okay. So uh, the first question is like, what is an accelerator? Right now, okay. in here, you have an incubator. <coughs> would you call it? Yeah. And what's the difference between incubator and accelerator? Um, incubator is where you have an idea, and there is an environment and a space and resources and advisors where you could nurture the idea and, and, and uh, discuss it with people who help you make it sharp and clear and understand that there is uh, you know the highest value piece of it take the noises out of it and uh, the, 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 the way that incubators work is just providing this space and environment the, the accelerator notion came um, uh, later and, and the accelerator is how do you accelerate the now you have an idea and, and a concept that uh, um, has a potential you have a right story how this could evolve into a <coughs> successful business this is very complicated uh, sometimes but sometimes could be very simple as well but but you have reached a place where you've learned okay I could make uh, you know uh, cups for water that would be um, much uh, you know cheaper maybe than these and you know they fill themselves water when I want to sit instead of me picking the bottle or something. So you take some idea like this and then uh, you develop it into something that could evolve into a, um, a business uh, and now to grow this business there, there's the concept of accelerators which is how do you accelerate that, that process of growth and you accelerate it by having the right specialized mentors and by having some uh, uh, financial resources to you know buy a robot that's going to pour the water or something uh, you know buy the, the the resources that you need with investment money potentially and by having the the feedback from um, experienced people in the accelerator that's going to help you accelerate and take this concept into okay how do we get this to be sold at the supermarket and, and people discover it and then people will buy more of it and uh, manufacture more and make more money and the company grows and that's like school for, for entrepreneurs or for startups yeah um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the good trait, I mean, it's interesting you mentioned school, the good trait of entrepreneurs are people who are always in the learning process. <coughs> so, and, and the learning is, is all about learning what the customer wants. Mm -hmm. And this process is, takes a lot of uh, 
a lot of trials and error. You know, I may decide that uh, this is, would be a good invention, but then uh, I spent uh, months and years building it, and then I put it on the market, and I realized people don't like water to be poured for them, and they like to pour their own water or something. So there is learning that that happens as you you put the uh, the concept of the solutions as a product on the market, and and you need to learn from what's the market, what is the customer's feedback is, are they liking or did they want it that way or they want something else. So that's the learning process that sometimes you it's not clear what's going on. It's it's people are buying it but they're not buying it as fast as I thought they would or. I thought these people are buying it, but no, it's not only, you know, 80 year old pensioners are the buying it. Uh, so you, you need to take this feedback from the market and understand what's going on. And that's the learning that is, uh, you need uh, experienced people, people who were in uh, water business or glass cup business or something, who will bring different insights. So the accelerator is to help accelerate that, that growth. And the, I mean, that's the, there's a very interesting point here that uh, about the, the you know the speed of, of growth and why you need to accelerate it. Um, I saw a picture a couple of days ago with a friend on on um, um, on Twitter who was putting like two chips on the fingertips, one of them from 2003, and it was uh, 128 megabytes, yeah. and one of them is from 2014 and it's 128 gigabytes. It's 1,000 yeah. more time uh, and, and processing uh, in the same size of technology and the same cost. That's Moore's Law. If you've heard of Moore's Law, how the technology... Um, so, so this allows for things to happen much faster. And uh, <clears throat> the amount of knowledge that is right now shared and, and discovered uh, is exponentially growing because because of the internet because we could store knowledge in a digital form we don't need just the books and inks and jobs now we could store you know unlimited number of books in our mobile phone and uh, you know what I've heard yesterday from uh, uh, this lady from IBM is 90% of knowledge 90% of information not knowledge 90% of the information uh, have been created in the last two years. If you take all the information that's been discovered in the human history, 90%, uh, 10 percent only was created up till two years ago. And in the last two years, more than 90 percent. That's, that's serious. It's, it's pretty serial. incredible thing to kind of like comprehend. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the amount of videos that they're uploaded on YouTube, there's three days worth of video uploaded every minute. <laughs> Every minute there is, you know, uh, what is that, 72 hours or something of, of videos uh, added or, or, or something. It, it's just, uh, so so change is happening much faster. Uh, we're, we're evolving into better product, uh, quality of life, better education in much shorter period of time than, than we used to. And, and with that, it's also allowing for people to build companies in much faster ways. Okay. And you hear about you know what's up, uh, uh, what's up, it's called? Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, three years old, four-year company, four-year company, uh, old company sold for eighteen billion dollars. There's you know there's big companies like Ford Motor Company and and, and uh, you know three other car makers and they've been in business for 50, 70 years. They're not worth eighteen billion dollars. So to create something that could reach this much value in such short period of time is is all due because of the nature of the the pace of change is increasing. We're going into something that uh, the change of, of what we could create for products that we could use for our lives and and and, and the knowledge that we could consume is just like incredibly could happen fast. So that could be like a scary thing, and it could be like a phenomenally fantastic thing. It's fantastic because you have the ability to take certain knowledge and accelerate it, you know, right this wave of all these things contributing, computing power and the cost of it that you could do now what you can't do before. Uh, thanks for that. I, I, I bet if I do
like a lot of time with my uh, with my question. So maybe let's switch to you. First of all, thanks a lot for this great event. And uh, I have a question about the accelerating program Black Box. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm currently looking into collaborating with the Baltic startups. And uh, what are the criteria to get into this program? So basically, are you looking for the companies who succeeded in, for example, Baltic states, or you're looking for like a talented team with the idea who is uh, into who is into development process right now? Thanks for the question because it's reminding me of the second part of your question. Why yeah. I saw black box? Yeah. yeah. So uh, just a little background. Like I said, I'm from Syria. I grew up in Syria, and and, and uh, when when I was a uh, 15 year old, I we had a little. Uh, horrible civil war in my town and, and, and two thirds of my classmates were killed. And I was like, you know, really not, not a typical thing to happen for a teenager, but it's just I hate violence and, and, and wars and this conflict. And, and, you know, being born in the Middle East with this notion of we're born into a war and conflict. And it is just an, an ugly frame that is I was surrounded with. And when I moved to the US, it was like, good, at least people here worried about economic development, not politics and differences between people. So uh, I, I I find that uh, given also what I just said, that now the, the ability to, to create value is much easier than it used to be before. And, and because of the internet and what's the internet have done in the past 15 years in our lives is Phenomenal! It's 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 as big as or bigger than the invention of electricity, in my opinion. You know, electricity was just you know creating this way that we're passing currents that we could take this power and make it do anything. You know, power a fan or make a refrigerator or build any tool. It's the same thing right now. We plug into this wall of data on the internet, and there is unlimited all the knowledge is available for you for free. You know, MIT courses, all of them are available on the internet. So there's in un unlimited, so knowledge is no longer monopolized by academia. So that's the good news. And, 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 and the ability for people to learn anything they want is, is possible right now because of the internet. So what I believe uh, that the, the, the value of, you know, the reason I, I wanted to create Black Box and focus on companies from outside of the U.S. is because I want to encourage people to choose that path of becoming an entrepreneur and create value, then choosing a path of, uh, you know, conflict and, 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 and destruction. And, um, you know, to, to look into this a little deeper, you know, people right now and maybe in Ukraine or in Egypt or in Syria or in uh, their, uh, their youth, their people like you just uh, getting out of school, getting out of college, and there are no jobs for them and, uh, because of, of corrupt governments and systems that is not allowing them to, you know, to, to participate. Uh, they get frustrated and, and, and uh, they, they, they start, you know, they become resentful and, and they pursue a different path to resist this, this uh, reality. Uh, the reason that you know they rightly so they can become frustrated because it's it's not our nature not to contribute you know people you know you guys when I was in university we you know used to kind of like uh, drink and smoke stuff sometimes and I can't what is the, what is my life purpose you know what is the, what am I gonna do with it and I this discovered that my life purpose is really the same as everybody else's life purpose is your purpose and yours. And, and there is very simple purpose for all of us to exist and that is to create value, to contribute. And, and we see it sometimes when people retire at old age, after they work, they're contributing, they have a job and they quit their job and then two years later they die. It's like they, they internally decide to shut off because like well, I, I'm useless, my kids are grown, they don't need me and I, my company doesn't need me and therefore I should go. And so, so I feel like the, you know, the, 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 the purpose to contribute is really what's, what drives us to create value. And, and we all feel good when we create value. I mean, when, when you get recognized for you know, creating something, for solving a problem, for helping someone, 
this is when you feel good. I feel good when I help someone cross the street and you know a blind person because and I don't need any recognition. I just feel good. So this is I believe it's in our DNA to contribute. So when there is no opportunities to contribute, when there is governments and systems and environment that is really suppressing and, and not allowing for people to uh, to add value in the society, these people are going to become resentful. And, and they end up choosing a path of, of um, you know, ideology and dogma and, and destruction and a difference. So why is he? Because they're, you know, friends with the president and the government and they're corrupt and but they get to be successful and have this job and buy that car and whatever. And I can't do it, therefore I need to go and kill that person or something. So it's, it's you know, it, it, having a purpose of creating value is always available right now because we have knowledge at our disposal. If the internet, especially in Latvia, you guys one of the, you know, I was in Pakistan a few months ago, and there are incredible amount of entrepreneurs in, in Pakistan and very, very uh, talented, although the, the uh, uh, literacy rate is only 30 percent in, in Pakistan. 80 million people, country, only 30 percent of them know how to write their name. And but out of those 30 percent, they're all educated in English. And um, they they could they could teach themselves, and they have good science and engineering schools, and and they create phenomenally very impressive technologies. And yet uh, the internet is, is monitored. There is no YouTube or there's other things. So when the electricity gets cut off eight hours a day. And you know, so you have a situation here where there is great infrastructure, uh, you have a stable country and, and, and uh, politics and currency and the politics, the European Union is a lot more than being, you know, like Pakistan now. So um, there, there's, there's a chance for each one of you to really find something that is more interesting and meaningful. I know we get to your questions maybe. Find tomorrow. Um, there's chance to find something that you enjoy uh, uh, learning and, 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 and creating and, and choosing the path of, of value creation instead of the path of resentment and, and um, hatred. And uh, we started Black Box because uh, I wanted to help those people who are creating these values become role models because I believe role modeling is really the most effective way to, uh, uh, to to educate. If you all, if I ask you, what is your favorite subject from school? From and, and they say math or history or chemistry, and I would ask you that other question: uh, Why did you like chemistry? And it's very likely you will tell me because you had a good chemist because of the teacher. And teachers more influenced by who they are, what we end up liking. And that to me is the role modeling that happens like an emotional switch for us. We have a connection. She is really smart and brilliant and look at her what she's doing now. And I want to be like her. She's also from, you know, from uh, 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 Riga and I know where she lives. I know her mom. It's like they could be just like me. And, and people have more of that connection. So to me, I wanted to help get successful deal. You know, the best possible entrepreneur I could reach to right now, great entrepreneur become champions and become role model. And I know by that I would help them influence the others in their communities and spread this, uh, you know, this notion of the ability to create value and to contribute, which is your purpose, is, is really available to each one of you right now. And it, the question is identifying what is it that you really care about more than anything else, not where is it going to make you the most money. Don't think, don't focus on the money. So we, the, the program at Black Box, uh, we bring uh, companies that they're usually um, at a stage where they've created a product and there is a team and they've launched the product and they're users, there's customers, not necessarily paying or not paying, that's not important. But they have created something valuable that some people seem to you know, validate that. And we look at those products in the form of, uh, is this product could be global also? Is this a product that everybody could use? Uh, you know, was, uh, I met yesterday in um, Estonia, 
um, entrepreneur you may know. Uh, front. <coughs> yeah, front. Uh, they they doing you know uh, designing you know tools for designers. Every <coughs> designer in in China or in Australia or in America or Latvia or whatever could use this tool. This is a visual tool. They're all communicating in the same way. So we choose products that they have the potential to be global. And uh, we work with these uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, in a matter of two weeks, we bring them together with other entrepreneurs from other parts of the world. So we have a very mixed uh, uh, in a, um, a program. It's two weeks. We bring 15 companies from 15 different countries. And founders get to learn about each other's cultures and, and, and challenges. And um, the goal is to help them understand how how you could access the, the best resources and, and the best practices of Silicon Valley. So we bring successful entrepreneurs like the founder of YouTube, the founder of uh, Square and Siri and others, and, and, and big investors also that I'm uh, lucky to have met these good people along my journey and they're normal people, they're just like you and me and everybody else. <coughs> and when they show up and they meet with the founders from here, these founders say, Look, Elon is just like me, like drinking Budweiser with me, wearing the t-shirts, and he's like more than other people. Well, and he, that guy was like telling about how it was a very stressful journey building a company. It's not easy, but it could be very rewarding. So we're uh, we look at those types of companies that they are uh, have passed a certain stage, and we help them access the resources in the valley. Okay, so. It is, uh, it is your vision, it is the most important thing while you do it, right? Yeah. The second is that it's global, it can be scaled, right? Right, the validation to me, uh, the selection process, how we pick them, mm -hmm. is based on why the entrepreneur is yeah. doing what they're doing, more than what is this industry. I don't care about specific industry or markets or if, if it's been done before or not, that's irrelevant. And your work is to open the the Silicon Valley like resources to this entrepreneur exactly. Yeah, first okay. is to open their mind more a little bit. <coughs> Usually, there's very common bugs in brain. Okay, that so. uh, we help debug those uh, bugs. One of the bugs is yeah. like uh, most entrepreneurs uh, in, in Europe and in different parts of the world also, but not in Silicon Valley. Um, they have a belief that if they have an idea, it's they they don't want to share it because someone might steal the idea. And that's a bug, and, and it's irrelevant. Ideas are worthless. Ideas are not really what it's about. Um, the only thing matter is execution. You know, Facebook was not a new idea. Facebook was there was MySpace before and Friendster and 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 uh, you know Starbucks did not invent coffee. Yeah, that's interesting that this thought comes from Fadi out, right? You take that in, in your mind because many of us have this this problem, this thought. Yeah, I'm not going to... Okay, I have a great idea. Okay, what is it? Yeah, I'm not going tell to... You. Yeah, no, 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 that's no, lame. No. The only, the best, yeah. I mean, the best thing happens to the idea is the only way the idea grows is by sharing it and getting feedback. Mm -hmm. And this is how you're going to discover if this makes sense or not. So. So we first we kind of debug this, and that's yeah. easy to do. And they realize that quickly, and, and they, they realize how much valuable uh, input that they're getting. Okay, yeah. please please raise your hands. How many questions do we have here in this audience? Okay, we have few, then we can answer like in five minutes. Then uh, let's start with you because you were the first one. Um, yeah, maybe I, I have a little comment on that uh, why we don't share ideas. Um, I think that sometimes people are ashamed that they, uh, their idea is not ready yet, so they don't tell not to get the valuable feedback that your idea is stupid and maybe you should do it some, some, somehow otherwise. So um, I think that we should also learn to take in that feedback and then somehow remix our idea so it's better and actually works. That's a good point. So let me tell you what I hear. What you're saying here is when people are uh, ashamed, uh, you know, what is the source of shame? What is the potential possible shame? Is your idea is stupid and you're going to fail, <coughs> right? So, so the ultimate thing is you're going to fail. Okay, so what does that look like? What, do you, what does that mean if you fail? 
like the idea doesn't work. Oh, I couldn't make a glass that pours water by itself. Okay, I've learned. You know, like Edison said, I, he didn't uh, he didn't fail a thousand times. He found a thousand way how not to make a light bulb. So, so the one thing that you need to Silicon Valley that also another bug that we help debug is we have what I call a permission to fail attitude in Silicon Valley. It's okay to fail. We understand all innovations, all new things don't happen in a straight line. And, and uh, <coughs> if you don't fail, that means you're not really trying something different. So failing is, is accepted in Silicon Valley. And it's interesting it's accepted in Silicon Valley because most people in Silicon Valley are from somewhere else. So it's much more difficult to fail in your hometown. <laughs> so, so leave this shame crap, you know, drop it, and and even be okay with the willingness to to start, uh, you know, stupid ideas. I mean, Zuckerberg's initial idea was was like a school book, and so he gets talks of girls and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> this is not like a, you know, so it's it's not necessarily bad that you have a stupid idea. It, it, you need to put this stupid idea out there and, and then uh, you know see if what, what's good and what's bad about it and uh, so so that's the yeah you have a question yes please who has uh, the next question yes yeah, i have a, so actually come in because we were one of the lucky uh, startups who went to silicon valley with uh, sanita as you might remember oh no i remember yes. why you were familiar <laughs> right right Yes, and I have to say that w that was the biggest, the most important step in our startup because our mindset totally changed. As you say, here you always afraid that who can steal our <coughs> idea. There you meet the person and person saying, how can I help you? Okay, I have a contact there, there, there. It was phenomenal experience actually. And we get everything what we want in Silicon Valley, investor, mentor, and <laughs> we are very lucky uh, that it was our decision to go because we wanted actually to see uh, to see where we are in the world. Because sitting here, you think, "Oh, my idea is amazing," and then you you know going to Silicon Valley, and then you start to think, "Wow." What yeah. is your business? It's a uh, gaming applications development. Yeah. Yes, and uh, our idea totally changed from where we were and where we are now. So, but thank you very much. It was seriously the best thing what you I didn't do. invent Silicon Valley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's, yeah, let, me, let me make a really clear yes. distinction here also, and, and something that you brought up before. Uh, it's not easy to uh, do things in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is extremely competitive, very smart people coming from all around the world with their brilliant ideas, and, and, and there are a lot of investors, and a lot of advisors, a lot of mentors. Uh, but the, the you know making and creating a business and launching a building a company is I tell you right now it's one of the most challenging things that you probably do very difficult not easy path but there is something about this path that is extremely rewarding uh, if you connect with your purpose is that the fact that you are learning about something every day. Every day is a new challenge, and every day is something else that you need to figure out and solve, and a new surprise, and, and, and whatever it is in, in the evolution of your company. So, so this process of learning is is usually rewarding because you're exercising your creativity here. You're, you're <coughs> thinking, how in the hell am I figure out how to make this waterproof by something? And it's like, you know, you're getting creative with this other smart people you're working with and, and you're testing your, 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 your best guess, your best judgment. So you develop a, 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 a confidence level about your own intelligence and your own knowledge of, you know, I'm capable maybe half the time of figuring out the answer and, 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 and creating something that wasn't thought uh, differently. But the other half is like you're wrong and you're you're struggling. So it's a, it's an emotional roller coaster. So one day is that you're elated like great things, and another day you're like shit, we're dead. And and it's 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 very difficult process. And Silicon Valley is not automatically the place where if you go, you will uh, uh, you you will be successfully creating a business. But Silicon Valley has an attitude of everybody. You know, I think it's the sunshine. We have a great weather. 
and it makes everybody optimistic, maybe you've heard of it. Uh, so there, there is a general sense of optimism, there is a general sense of people are creating value and participating or making things on a global level. There is a sense of people more like an adventure because they move from different part of America or different part of the world into Silicon Valley. Uh, so there is in general more of an optimistic, positive, encouraging environment. So that's great because you go there, everybody could benefit from that. But it, it, it doesn't, you know, it, it takes you like one, one step, one step. <coughs> uh, the other thing is there, there's this positive environment. It, it creates this attitude of what we call this, this pay it forward uh, mentality. Um, you know, Steve Jobs have mentioned that he, he was, you know, his mentor was the founder of Intel, the CEO of Intel. Bob Noyce was Steve Jobs' uh, mentor. That Steve, in his book, says, you know, in order to understand uh, what's what, you know, how to do good solution, now you need to understand what's come before. So you need to talk with these experts who innovated in in a PC and a computer before, and where is the limitation, and how you can innovate. So there is this uh, uh, a lot of uh, advice and mentorship. <coughs> Is, is available and, and everybody is willing to share their knowledge with you, not being threatened that the knowledge is, um, you know, they're losing by sharing stuff with you, by advising you. So that's another layer of, of value. So you go, you're going to get some good feedback and people, you're going to learn a lot of stuff because a lot of people are doing this and you can run into people randomly in a bus or in a cafe who will know something about what might we be doing if it's technology related and we give you good advice. But it's still, it's still you have a lot of challenges to go through if you want to be building um, the business. So the, the key piece here is, you know, you mentioned that, that the issue with the vision, it's, it's really definitely having a vision is, is great, but it's not, you know, getting a bit clarity of a vision uh, is, is not like something available for all of us any minute. Um, but what's available for us is to do something that we care about. To, to, to try to solve a problem, to build the business in a domain, in an area where this learning process and this bloody pro, you know, along the way that you're going to fall on your nose and you're going to get punched in the eye and whatever, is, is going to be learning instead of, you know, uh, you know, it's like, you know, I play football, you enjoy being on the grass and running around. And, so whatever the game happens, you're enjoying being. So, so figure out where is the place that you enjoy and, and, and where is the, the areas that you feel like you like the learning of the, 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 the topics or the, the domains of. And where are the problems in, in that space? You know, is it really a problem that the water bottles don't pour itself? I don't think so. I don't think it's a big problem. And then, like, you know, am I interested in, in just innovating consumer products and robotics, or am I interested in, in getting people into, you know, solving the, <coughs> the, the clean water problems? So think of the vision or uh, think of the idea from a broader, broader space. If you're thinking about starting a business and, and a business is in, in gaming or like, why do I care about gaming? Why is that a domain that I'm really interested in? And, you know, is this just because uh, there is potential, you know, business model and opportunity to make money? Or because I love entertainment and I want to create things to help people have more entertaining life or something. And I want to create this kind of gaming or those kind of gaming. So figure out what is really important about this space because in the process of this, you will fail. But that would not be a failure of the learning process. You know, if you want to create a, a, a tool to help students, uh, you know, share their notes or homework or something, you know, why do you want to do this? Is it because you understand that this is a problem when not everybody in the big hall could communicate with what the homework or whatever it is? You, you've identified certain problems that you're living in, and you thought, oh, I could like build this thing and make it easy to solve. Are you interested in doing things in education in general? Because that might not be the right uh, application or tool or solution. But then you're learning something about how people learn and how they're willing to share information about knowledge and education or something. 
So okay. pick, pick a place where you're interested in. Okay, uh, and the next question, we have like 15, 20 minutes then. Uh, the psychological uh, side of the process. Uh, do you have any advice on uh, how to overcome the fear of failure or, for example, um, uh, fear of losing money, like when uh, leaving, have kids and uh, go to work, but I have an, an idea, but uh, I think if I, how do I start implementing the idea and not losing the money to see the kids? Yeah, I, I mean, how do you deal with fear? Um, you experience fear, it's the best way to deal with it. But then you realize you survive. I mean, I don't know what, what's exactly, I mean, I'm not going to suggest that, you know, uh, risk feeding your kids. Uh, if you don't have kids, I will be suggesting more harsher uh, ways to, to be dealing with your, uh, uh, with your fear. Uh, fear of failure is, is just um, a don't change the word of failure. It's just like really think of it in terms of what am I going to learn in this process? And, you know, in terms of the money is, you know, what am I going to do if I <coughs> don't make money? I, you know, I just remember maybe there are times when you thought also in the past when you were never going to make money again or you lost your job and you thought you were going to end up on the street. But, you know, it really, you know, two, three weeks, three months later, you find a job, you start running away. So, um, yeah, I mean, only advice I would say is like, believe that nothing is, nothing is permanent, nothing is constant. The only constant is change. The things will constantly change and they cannot continue to change too bad. So even if you take your complete control out of this game and just like float in life, you're not going to just float into a negative, <laughs> you know, one disaster after the other. You'll be lucky along the way as well. Okay, that's a very interesting question actually. Answer, so. mm, some other questions? So, uh, hello. Uh, hello. I have heard many people say that it is not advised for two friends to found a company, like 50-50% mm. shares or capital or, or whatever, and uh, is that a bug? That's a bug. Yeah. So, <laughs> is this thing is this thing not going to change? Sort of, you become enemies because not no, no. So, so there's a couple of things here. Uh, the the source of the bug, uh, uh, I found it to be um, associating money with uh, uh, having a having a negative frame on money and. and um, negative association with money, like money is, you know, uh, money corrupts, absolute money corrupts absolutely, money is a source of more evil, and all of those kind of things. It's, we look at examples in life where there's people who have a lot of money and a lot of power, and they're horrible people. And we think that it's because of the money and the power that they're horrible. And we think making money is a necessary evil of life. When you're an entrepreneur, you should not be thinking about, you know, you definitely want to create something that would have value, that would be exchanged for money. Too. And it's, but, but there's nothing wrong with making money. Not all people with money are bad. And uh, the, the, the thing about founding um, a company with, with, uh, with your husband or your best friends or your cousin or your sister or whomever, it's... Um, I think it's it's the best uh, the best co-founder are the people that you know and you trust. As long as there is a complementary knowledge, there is a value of the two of you. One plus one is three. Um, it's you definitely need, that's the person you want to be with, and, and who is your co-founder. And the, the the number one thing that kills startups is issues with co-founders. Uh, that they. Uh, the personality and, and, and the power struggle that they may have. So it's not bad at all, and it's definitely recommended. I would prefer to work with founders who've known each other since they were kids, they were best friends or something. Even if they fight or whatever, it's not. But, but the, the, uh, starting with, with people that you know, uh, there is a high level of trust and, and, and respect to what they know and what you know. As long as you define it in the beginning, 
like we're gonna start a company. Now this is the company is not me and it's not you. It's a third entity, and this entity we, 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 is like a it's like a baby in itself. It's a, we're adopting a dog or we're, you know creating a plant. This is not us, but we need to nurture it together, and and we have to have a clear commitment to what each one of us is gonna bring to to this dog. And if I'm gonna walk the dog, you're gonna bathe the dog. Or something, right? You will feed, and I will move the dog. And it, it's figuring out who is, you know, what is this entity's responsibilities, and and defining. It's important to define who is a the CEO. You need to have a uh, a person amongst the two of you who is gonna say at at a point in time when there is a decision that both of us are very unsure about but needs to be made a decision needs to be made and we can't be you know we can't be stuck in you believe this way and I believe that way and we can move forward so you need it just so so you need to play the formality of the business in its simplest form just like okay who is the CEO just for breaking a decision and, and keeping you moving and that decision is not necessarily is always going to be right absolutely <coughs> not and it's not going to be the source of blame. It's not that either. But it's just to keep to keep the the process moving forward. So to keep the learning. So uh, in terms of like splitting the equity 50-50, it's it's not always ideal. So I don't necessarily say no. Always do 50-50. But it's it, it's not necessarily bad. Uh, depending on you know who is uh, who's who's has done more. Maybe. So it's not always rational. Like three of us starting a company, okay, it's one third, one third. No, that's not good. If you know, if I'm the one who is really building a product and I've been thinking about this and I've created all of this and now we decided that you know you join because you're gonna make the you know the, the, the beautiful uh, scalable engine in the back, you're gonna code something like crazy, but but I've already put the idea, I've already kind of convinced both of you. So you, I need to be, a, a, you know, we can't be equally small, <coughs> even though that not much has been created. Mm -hmm. So and and there is a, there is a tool for for this online kind of interesting. If you're a little bit later in the stage, uh, it's called uh, founder.com without the e founder uh, dr. And then you could put the the yeah, the team members, you know, what is their skills, what have they done, and it helps you allow it allows you to understand how you could um, break down the ownership mm -hmm. percentage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more question. Uh, the question is about you are from Silicon Valley. Probably you can highlight uh, the some of the trends. Probably they are happening in Silicon that that are going to probably take over. Uh, New, new paradigms. I, I, uh, I read that uh, some of investors are, are very keen in this artificial intelligence. Is it just the noise or is it really happening there? So what are the, the some of the... Probably you, in there, you, you, you can feel it, where the investors go, where the ideas are going. What, what are those things? Maybe you can share. Yeah, there are some patterns sometimes that you can see, but there are some things that come out of the like, field and no one knows, not even the investors know. So there is no, I mean, uh, no one really knows. There are some, some like I said, patterns and, and, and uh, trends. And one of the trends that right now is, uh, I think the, the internet of things, more like, uh, you know, again, like the, the, the analogy of the internet being the electricity. Right now, we don't realize that electricity exists. It's around us everywhere we go. And, and the internet is becoming that way. So now there are a lot more objects that they communicate to. <coughs> my brilliant idea of, like, you know, when I arrive in a room, the bottle is going to jump and pour me water automatically because it knows I'm in a room and that's. Yeah. So, so there's the Internet of Things. There's connections of devices. There's measuring a lot of data. Like I said, that this 90% uh, of, of data has been collected in the past two years. So there's this notion of uh, big data stuff, and and, and how are you going to sift all this noise and, and 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 figure out where is the knowledge and where is the value and how you can make life more efficient. So. Uh, in terms of artificial intelligence that's been existing forever, so, so it's, it depends what you define artificial intelligence. It's pretty intelligent for Google to know what I'm about to search for. Right? The AI is existed, you know, going to a different level of AI, 
I don't know if it's going to be like a, a, a switch. It's happening in many, many increments along the way. And uh, so there's no, um, you know, uh, trends and, and um, specifically in Linux. Generally, I think it's a, a, a device connection. So I've been saying like hardware is a new software kind of thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, so. Okay, yeah. Thanks for your presentation. I have a question also a bit about um, Blackbox. So what yeah. is your business model? So kind of who pays for, for your service, how it goes? And then maybe, I don't know, if we have a time, maybe you could explore some, I don't know, some case uh, from these recent companies that you have nourished, like something, what, mm -hmm. what, what you have sent to mind? Yeah, so... Uh, so uh, the business model from Black Bus, we do these two weeks education program, and uh, it's actually a non-profit entity that does this. You know, we recently separate that as a two two entities. The education programs, work, which are the two weeks, are like a successful product that come out of Black Box. Kind of organically, we found that this is really the highest value that we could deliver in a packaged way. We sell this for fifteen thousand dollars for two founders to be there for two weeks and including their um, airlines and food and everything and accommodation and full work for the speakers and everything else. Um, realizing that entrepreneurs don't have this kind of money more often than not. They don't have this money despite whatever value they get out of it. So what we have is we have uh, partners with uh, Google Ventures and Google for Entrepreneurs. So Google is sponsoring uh, entrepreneurs. They pay that 15000 for companies that we select. So we're looking for we you know that's another reason to do nonprofit so we can have more scholarships by companies who are interested in promoting entrepreneurship and promoting the sharing of Silicon Valley and promoting innovations around the world because Google's doing this because eventually people will use Google product if they help people from South Africa build companies um, and eventually they could become Google and it you know, makes their brand look good so their value for enterprise so that's how we cover the operation of uh, the education program. So uh, the the real business model is investment model. So we use the two weeks in a way also to learn about who these people are and, and do we believe in these people building things for the right reason, have the potential that they can uh, grow something big. And uh, the point here is to invest in these companies, these select companies. So. We're, we're kind of like finding a, a clean funnel here, <coughs> starting with select good companies from around the world, putting them together, they get a lot of great value, become a member of this global network, and that they're collaborative, but they move it at a different speed. So when the right one moves at the right time, when they need investments, we will come in and invest in it. So the business model general is, is long term is, you know, I want to make money and I, I believe the money will come in, in that. And an example, we've had a company, we had uh, um, a Slovak and um, Czech entrepreneur came to uh, Silicon Valley and uh, about two years ago. Uh, they came to interview at Byte Combinator, which is another accelerator in Silicon Valley that uh, helps startups and they were rejected for some reason. But I talked to them and I liked them and, and I thought that they really have some great ideas. And so we agreed to work with them, and that was more of a uh, uh, actually like an operational investment model where I help them provide the space and connections and guidance. And we got you know a couple of percent in that company and a small amount of equity. And uh, ten months later, they were sold uh, for like twenty million dollars uh, wow. to uh, yeah. Two months later, yeah. Ten. Ten months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, less than a year later. They were sold. They were sold for stock, also for this company, GoDaddy, which is a domain hosting company. And now the company is going to go public this year. For value, it's going to be uh, probably four times, three, four times. So it'll be like sixty to eighty million dollars. And uh, so that's a success story because it, you know, makes these guys um, first time success, and they're I'm, I'm proud of them. They're proud of themselves, and people in Prague and, and other you know they look up to them. And, and they're still very humble and very good people, and, and you know they will do other great things. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Another question. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the saturation and the size of the start market? Like, you know, in the last few years, it's been growing like uh, exponentially, and there are thousands of new startups and hundreds every day. And sometimes we just like uh, tech or engineer. 
seeing our startup in the last like hundred million, and you just see that idea and think it's not really good. So we'll continue that way or you see the world go and like like dot com or some of that. Yeah, I think uh, I mean it's a terrific <coughs> the more more startups start the better. If the future is not necessarily every startup needs to be a billion dollar company or twenty million or whatever million. There are different ways to start businesses and, and different reasons to start businesses. And uh, but I think starting businesses is is the best way to work. I mean, it, it, the best model of of, of a, a job to do what you love, what you're good at, and what you're in, and, you know you have more control of it. You can set the rules and the laws and how you want to do it. You know, I started uh, my first business. I never studied business. I graduated with industrial engineering degree. I don't have a business education, and I've created my own rules. I had a contract to work with customers, and then when the customers was not behaving in my in the ways that I like, I had a contract. I, I, I fired a customer. I sent them another contract. <laughs> They're no longer a customer. I, you know, I did business my way and, and, and I just followed what felt right and what's it like to be in the other person's shoes and and, and, and I'm fortunate kind of to eventually get to a place where um, you know I share my knowledge and, and meet interesting people and, and, and talk to people around the world and see great places. I, I have no idea that's what I would be. So, um, so I, I, I think everybody definitely if they think um, I may want to start a business they should definitely you know think more about that and start more businesses. And there is no too many uh, startups. There are too many people who work at big companies that they're miserable. 80% of people who have jobs, they hate their jobs, and they, they have miserable lives, and they always, you know, happy it's Friday, and they're miserable it's Monday. <laughs> and there's no reason to live life that way. So, uh, yeah, so don't be scared that there's more competition for you. But no, everybody is is a unique, and you bring a different way to do things. Even if the idea has been done many times before, it's okay. Do it, and it's not like uh, and it's not about the idea. It's how well you execute this idea. Okay, and then uh, the last last two questions, please. And then I will ask for also one question from my side. Uh, hi, Fadi. We met a couple of years ago when I was a student at Skolko Setup Academy 1. Ah. So the very first Skolko Setup Academy. So, and yes, same startup as it was, by Technological. And we will soon be expanding to States. I would be very grateful if you could elaborate on some barriers of mentality, like Eastern European and States, some things to overcome. And also, what's your master plan about Latvia and Eastern Europe? Uh, Maybe you are going to open some accelerator here. <laughs> <laughs> Any right. plans? Yeah, good uh, question. That's very good. <coughs> so, uh, uh, so uh, let me. Uh, uh, the first question: the mentality. Um, yeah. So there's common barriers. I'm glad you asked because there are some common notions. It's kind of interesting with this exposure that I have with different nationalities in different countries. There, there are different bugs and different systems. And, and uh, um, Eastern European have issue with trust, so they don't trust other people, and that's a problem. That is a big problem. That would stop you. It would hold you back because the whole thing about startup is to execute and to do something. And when you're not gonna do it because you don't know if you should trust her or not, uh, you're damaging more, you know, because you don't know, uh, they may take advantage of you. Is this fair or not fair? I'm not sure. I need to check with 15 more people to see if I'm being taken advantage of or not. I don't want to be taken advantage of. I don't want to be cheated. Oh, yes, people are cheated and I don't want to be stupid or ashamed, cheated. Drop all this crap. I mean, there's trust and, 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 and the, the, the best part about trust is, and it's the same thing with, with uh, you know, the fear of people would, would steal your ideas. 95% of the time, or if not more, you know, if, if you start with trust, you will get trust. You, you may burn, you may get burned 5% of the time, but you will be so many times helped. Is it the same with B2B, B2C? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is not an industry specific, this is not a technology specific. There's very, very rare cases when uh, you may have like a, you know, very unique something that is going to disrupt something, but it's still, it's really rarely are the case of 
you you shared something and because someone knows it now you lost it's really never an argument it's an argument of a victim who's blaming the others on their own failures and they say oh someone took my idea today not really i mean you so so that's the plan for uh baltics is is to yeah i would love to have a uh a, a black box in every city. How was that? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's we are we're basically you know the vision of black box is to build this global community of, of great entrepreneurs and people who participate in this game. Uh, we've had uh, yeah, we've done the program seven times, uh, the black box connect program, and now in the last program we've had uh, one of the two of the founders actually who were in now uh, in the earlier programs who have moved to Silicon Valley, raised money, and now they're setting up office. So it's good to see that the participants could come back as a mentor and they share their knowledge and, and their experience. So the, the vision is growing this community selectively and carefully with limited number of people, not with the largest number of people. And, and those people adopt these kind of ethos and, and, and uh, philosophies of helping others and contributing and <coughs> and uh, um, see this all around the world. And, and, and the best way to do it is to find good partners in <coughs> different regions who are more familiar with, uh, you know, with, with their, we, we, can't, we, we can't screen 100,000 people, right? I want to look at only five startups. I don't want to look at 1,000 startups. And we're clear about where we can be more effective and who are the companies we want to look at. I would much rather work with partners who understand that if they're in the Baltics or if they're in Argentina or if they're in China, whatever they're at, and, and have those people help us, uh, you know, generate those types of uh, results. Okay, thanks. Funny, and the last question. So, then the question will come, uh, that the question uh, which I wanted to ask is, uh, what what could you like tell us like three steps how to really to start a business? What should I do today to start a business after a week? What's the first like first uh, three steps? Okay, so the first step is to uh, it, 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 <coughs> to, 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 to start the business is to know you need to know. I don't, I don't want to say the word idea. Yeah. Uh, you need to know what do you give a shit about, what do you care about, what is important to you, what what is the, and, and where do you feel there is a hole in that issue. Mm -hmm. You know, if food and eating healthy is important and you think <coughs> like there is no place in, in Latvia or there is no uh, place in, in your neighborhood or there's no place on the internet that you can find the right kind of healthy food that you think is optimal and you want to solve food <coughs> you know figure out what is what is something that you care about and you want to so define that and then if you say let's say you already know what that is and and you have some idea okay I I want to build uh, a, a restaurant or I I, I want to start an applications that uh, you know make banking easier or make people save money or whatever it is that you you identify the domain and 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 a, and a problem that you want to solve. Uh, the next thing you should do is is, is go and, and learn and discover and, and research about who who have been solving this problem. I guarantee you, no idea you will have will be no idea. I know that no matter what I think of, to me it's no idea. And I know the minute I'm thinking it, someone else thought it before too. And sure enough, I will find out that that's be true. So learn as much of it as possible from see what's been done. And then, so that's step two. Step three is go and talk to as many potential customer users of your idea. And talk to people who would be you know it's you want to create this food that comes from seaweed that makes people live twice as long you know go talk to people and see if they that's what they eat this food what would, would this is make? so so uh customers is what you need to be thinking about if you're going to be starting a business and and think of you know sharing this this concept of starting a business with these people so 
on the logistics <coughs> side of things, I don't know how it works in, in uh, Latvia, but I know it's very easy to uh, go to uh, City Hall in, in any town in USA and register yourself as a business. And you don't need to pay money, taxes, or anything. You just establish an identity of this third entity of this is a business that I'm going to build. Give it a name um, and, and uh, figure out what are the you know, what are the things, I mean, it's hard when you ask me this question without knowing where you're at in terms of what you're going to do to start a business. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need to start a business for starting a business, say. I think you need to start a business for the sake of knowing that you have a unique skill and you have a gift and you know you're a good violinist mm -hmm. and you need to figure out a way, how do I freaking make a life, make a living playing violin? And that's where I would be focusing on and Discovered really what is what is your your uniqueness, and then how do I create value with the uniqueness <coughs> that I have? That this value could be exchanged for money, and don't think of this: is this scalable? Is this going to be a billion dollar? This is like not the time for for that. If you just want to go play this gambling thing for you, know, go to gambling casinos. But it so so think of it of. Where is the one thing that I care about, and what is it that I I care about? Typically, the kind of things that I'm good at. How how do I create value? Who, who else could use my uniqueness in a way? And and I think creatively, like how can you put a business around it? You know, I can't. You know, is it does it make sense to go play uh, violinist on the side of the street and open my box here? People give me money. I don't know if I'll make enough money to feed my kids. It's not a necessarily a good business model. How do I do it? Uh, yeah, maybe if I just like, you know, do a, a, a regular uh, violin shows on, on, on SoundCloud or some websites and I share my thing and see if others want to contribute and then <coughs> maybe I record it. So just think of giving before taking and, and, and focus on value before money. Focus on creating value and the money will figure itself out. The business model will take care of itself. Once you have validated things, <coughs> Twitter doesn't have a business model still, you know. There's many, many companies that have hundreds of millions and billions of dollars, and Google didn't have a business model until they figured out the AdSense and then AdSense making them a lot of money. So uh, focus on creating value, and then uh, the business would, would, would uh, sort itself out, or you could study the business. Model. Okay, and we will leave this session with this thought and uh, thank you very much buddy and uh, next actually in the evening you will be able to meet buddy as we, uh, again uh, and where where the happening uh, where the happening is going on where oh thank you Mr. Mill previous 33 previous 33 yeah this is an open event right but we're uh, we're here for another half hour or something I don't know yeah, yeah, I mean I'm happy to uh, I want to contribute I'm going to help you wherever I can while we're here, so yeah, we can start that. Maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah, if you have like some specific idea you want to speak with Fanny, maybe you can come come out. When you come out, then you just uh, uh, ask Fanny your questions, right? Can we do that? Uh, you know, if, if yeah, no, absolutely, we do that. I mean, like, the, this is the thing, like, I, you know, I want to make the, uh, make sure that whatever, um, you know, certain things I can help with, and uh, in the bird room, right? <laughs> uh, if there's something that I can help with now or in the future, uh, I will put my uh, email on the board also. Yeah, okay. Don't no expect me to reply um, <laughs> in the same day, but I will uh, eventually at uh, ADI. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but please uh, Okay. Use use whatever. Uh, I hope that was valuable whatever learning that you have. If you if you want to debate and ask you and, and questions and tell me how to get, deal with your fears, I, I like those questions. Too. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's right. Okay. You have to push strong. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's something. Something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so black box. Uh. Um, okay. Okay, then.
Thank you very much, buddy. And uh, thank you all for... Thank you for your time.